All right, guys, uh, we're here with Randy. We've been out on the juvenile hunt this morning with Tucker. And, uh, unfortunately, didn't see any deer, but uh, it's probably the last time we'll be in the woods. Yeah. Uh, but we're kind of getting geared up. Uh, Randy's ordered a, a new traditional bow here. I'll let him tell you about it in a minute, but we're just kind of going to do an unboxing. We, uh, we've got some other bows that we've been shooting. Uh, my grandfather's got a, a dart and ranger that I've been shooting. Uh, I think, Randy, you've got a... Uh, uh, what your recurve you uh, got? Uh, Simic. Simic Predator. Simic Predator that he's been shooting and uh, we've kind of wanted to get into the longbow realm so uh, I, I got one of them and Randy got one and like I said we're just gonna do a little unboxing. We, we watched a lot of reviews and these are kind of cheaper bows, very affordable and um, anybody looking to get into traditional hunting, I mean I think this for this whole pack what do we pay like $120? Yeah. Yeah. Got it on Amazon, so uh, we're gonna do a little unboxing, get this thing out, and shoot it, and uh, go from there, see how it shoots. But uh, we let Randy get into it here. Yep, we're gonna got it in probably, uh, I guess, a little bit more than a week ago, but we're just kind of waiting for things to kind of calm down so we can unbox. So here we go. I'm a bit excited about opening it. It's hard not to open something. It's like a little oh, kid yeah. at Christmas when you get some hunting gear in. Oh yeah, it's and and to say this about uh, traditional hunting, you know, I've had a predator for a pretty good while, and uh, I really tried to shoot instinctional, and uh, really it's hard to. It really oh yeah, I, I can remember when me and you. I don't know. About four or five years ago or more, when yeah. I got my grandfather's dart out yeah. and uh, started shooting, and I, I, I honestly probably didn't know what we were doing. Yeah, you know, yeah. Uh, we were backing up. I don't know, 10, 15 yards, and yeah. half time you'd you'd hit target, half time you wouldn't. And you couldn't get any consistency out of anything. It seemed like, and like you said, we kind of gave it up. Yeah, kind of gave it up. But we watched. What we watched a video called the push, uh, and I recommend anybody getting into traditional archery. It's a long, it's like a little over two hours, Yeah. Uh, but it's called The Push, and it will go into detail from start to end, everything you need to know about traditional archery, how to set your bow up, uh, how to tune your arrows, and more importantly, aiming aiming procedures and processes. Oh, and yeah. there's you know about, about three different ways that you can shoot. One of them is instinctual, which my hat's off to of those guys. I mean, I don't, I don't know if I could ever do it. Uh, yeah. It's very difficult. Uh, you have gap shooters, which he'll talk to you about on there about how gap shooting is. And then then string walkers. And what he kind of recommends for, for hunting situations is a fixed crop. Yeah. Uh, of course, we won't get into all that today, but that's the process or the, the method that me and Randy use. And probably within a month's time, uh, after 25 yards, we were shooting very accurate using yeah. this fixed crop and watching that video. Well, we 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 actually been hunting with them. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we went from really not sh not being able to hit the broad side of a barn if you have it that way to being able to hunt 25 yards with them. Yeah, so we were down in Giles County probably the last weekend of, of deer season this year. And, yeah. Uh, of course, we're, that episode's probably done being out. You probably done seen it by now, yeah. but. Uh, yeah, within a month's time, we were able to get in the woods and shooting that consistent and, and familiar with how these bows shoot to uh, to have the confidence to get in the woods. Yeah, buddy. And and even further, when we get this one up and rolling, if it's rolling good uh, here around the end of March, we're gonna try to harvest the turkey with these bad boys if we can. That's a tall order. Some would even call us stupid. <laughs> but yeah. we're gonna try. We're gonna try. We're gonna try. As long as, as long as we can get them shooting after it and have the confidence to go in the woods with them, we're gonna try. We're gonna, we're gonna try. But this bow here is a uh, this is a black hunter bow. Uh, you can buy them from different manufacturers uh, on Amazon. Like I said, they're fairly cheap. This package here, I think, $120, $125. Uh, like I said, it's not your state art bow by no means. Not a custom bow, but. Uh, We'll see how it shoots here. We'll see if it's, in our opinion, if it's worth the money. So, what do you got there, Randy? Looks like we got there loaded up pretty good. And we got some, uh, as, as Tucker would call us, some constructions. We do. We and do. Uh, we got some Allen wrenches here. We're going to get her set up and get it put together, and then we're going to uh, see if we can 
See what yep. we can do with it. Looks like we got a woodwork riser here. Yep. yep. Maybe made out of maple, I believe. Looks like a grain in there. Yep. I think the limbs are actually constructed of uh, bamboo on the inside. And uh, like I said, this is a uh, this is actually a longbow. I guess a kind of a hybrid longbow because it does have some deep legs uh, to the limbs. But when you string it up, we'll see the string does not touch the the belly of the bow, which does make it a longbow. So uh, looks like this kit here comes with a. Actually comes with a bow stringer, uh, which we, we use the step through method. I've never really used these, but it comes with a bow stringer. And Looks like you've got a got a string here. And we opted for the uh, Flemish twist. Flemish twist. Uh, we had already pre-ordered some strings for these. Uh, got mixed reviews from what I was reading on the strings that come with these. Some of them say they're pretty good. Some of them say you need a need a, a new string. So. Went ahead and got a, uh, a Flemish twist string for this. Uh, it's the size of the bow. This is a 60 inch bow, uh, AMO. So if you do order something for it, it'll be an AMO 60 inch length. Um, so that's what you want to get. Also comes with some Otterball silencers, uh, which are pretty nice. These alone will probably yeah. cost you eight or ten dollars on uh, Amazon. So these are pretty good. Of course, uh, on Randy's old bow, you can also use a uh, paracord uh, to make silencers, but pretty easy way to do it but we've noticed that on these bows and of course we're not reinventing the wheel but you can really quieten them down with uh, uh, with yeah. some paracord or some otter or beaver balls yeah. and also some of the silencers that attach to the back end which we'll be showing you later these things that yeah. uh, really quieten them down so the bear hair on the back side there, absolutely the bear hair it makes a world of difference for them and this here too, Randy, I don't know if you can see it on here, but it's got like some felt here, which is actually where your limbs connect. So that's going to actually probably quieten it down a little bit too. Yeah. And it's actually got a little guide piece here. Uh, some, of, some of the cheap ones I noticed don't have this little guide piece, so it's, that's kind of nice to have that. So. Yeah. But we'll have to get this thing together. Uh, Randy's got some shelving. Basically, we've been just shooting straight off the shelf. Uh, seems, especially for hunting situations, a lot easier. So uh, we're going to get this thing constructed and see. And that's pretty much the process other than stringing it. Um, and this is just me personally, and, and I'm definitely by far no expert on traditional archery. I'm, I'm, I'm new to it myself, learning as I go, but I would probably recommend anybody want to get into traditional archery, unless you've just got money to burn, I would not go out and buy a $500, $1,000 bow to get started. Get you something like this that's you know got good ratings, that's cheaper, uh, see if you like it. I mean, you, I hate to think you dumped a thousand dollars in a bow and, and didn't care for it. You know, I mean, at least this, you're not not out much money. And and, and like I said, the ratings on these for what they are is pretty high. But we'll we'll run it through the paces here and, and see if we'll hold up. So, well, it's it's, a, it's different type. It's different type shooting. Yeah, like you we, might you might say, well, I shoot seventy pounds on a compound. If you've not never shot one of these before. It's it's a little bit different. Mm -hmm. You really need, because I thought I was wanting to go maybe to a 50 or 55 pound, but the more I've thought about it and, and the more I've read about it, yeah, 45 is good enough. Yep. You can't get too much poundage in your Especially your no, until you yeah. until you build up to it. And I've noticed the more I've been shooting, the, the easier it's getting. But but start, starting off a 45 pound bow is, is I know it may sound like if you lied if you never shot it, but it's 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 kind of difficult once you yeah, start you know putting a few arrows down range. So yeah. don't 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 outbow yourself in the beginning. Get something lighter. Uh, work on your technique, your anchor points, and uh, once you build up, if you want to go up in poundage, uh, go up. But Forty-five pounds is more than appropriate to kill kill a whitetail. Yep, yeah. yeah, sure is. Um, next thing we're going to do is set our knock. And we always, just like I said, I'm no expert. Um, what we normally do is set up about a half inch or so high. Now it's been our experience with this. You always want to set just a little higher than where you want because um, you want to shoot this thing a few times. Uh, when you shoot it, you want to be watching for your arrow to porpoise. What I mean, porpoise, I mean it's going to do like this. 
your knock's too high. Uh, which we're going to intentionally set it just a little high, shoot, start moving down in small, small increments to where the porpoising comes out of the arrow and you start getting a straight flight. Then you're going to tighten your knock the rest of the way down. That's yeah. work for us. You just want to set that flush where your arrow is going to set on your rest. All right, guys, we're upstairs now and uh, got a couple of targets in it here. Uh, starting off, <clears throat> when you're setting these knocks, you want to kind of get up close, make sure where you're hitting, uh, because we're actually we're actually not shooting uh, right under uh, the arrow knock. Uh, if you'll notice, I've, I don't know if you can tell, but we've got a, another knock down here below. That's my fixed crawl. Uh, of course, that's something we'll set up later after we get the arrow shooting straight. But going to shoot at 10 to 15 yards. And then also another thing we're going to do is you notice on my bow, uh, we've already got the, the otter balls installed and the bear hair underneath the string. And so we're going to we're kind of going to see how much this quietens it down versus just a raw bow uh, out of the case. So we're going to go ahead and uh, Randy, you want to shoot first? It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Uh, Randy's new bow shoot first. Three rules in traditional shooting. You have to turn your hat around backwards. Yeah. You have to wear flannel. Yeah. And you have to have facial hair. That's true. You got to check in the box. <laughs> Except for the flannel. You don't have it on right now. <laughs> I no flannel. All <laughs> hey, we're going rogue. You're going rogue. Not bad. Not too bad. Oh, yeah. All right, guys, what we're doing here, um, for lack of better words, this is kind of like what you, uh, when you're compound bow hunt, would almost be like a peep, although you're not looking through this. We're just tying a piece of bright colored thread on here, and what that does, uh, when you come back to anchor, you'll see this bright thread on me, it's right in the corner of my eye. Um, and that way I know when I come back, that thread is lined up with the corner of my eye. I know I'm anchored right. And it also just gives you another, another point of, you know, of anchor when you're shooting your, when you're shooting your bow and it kind of, kind of helps a lot. But we've noticed you, you can actually use a knock for this, but, uh, well, the whole thing dropped off there. But to me, just having something a little bright colored in your peripheral vision to me helps a lot. Yeah. And especially, I mean, what's one reason we use a uh, little bright colored thread, especially for low lighting hunting, hunting situations uh, where you can still see that. Here, the pink, to me, the pink works good over the white yeah, just I think you could see like in the low light. Yeah, and I think what I've got on mine is like a like a bright yellow. Yeah, you do. You do. And basically when you wrap this, you just want to build up some thread there. And when you get done, just put you a little dab of super glue or something on there to to lock it in. This is a little old tip that uh, we watched watching old uh, Clay Hayes. Yeah, yeah. Them guys know what they're doing. They, they're really good at it. Some of your uh, hardcore traditional guys may, may frown on this. We're kind of novice, uh, so any little advantage we can get to help us, the better. And especially in a hunting situation, where we want to make Try to have every advantage with this we can to make a make a good clean kill. Yeah. You just tell me how That's far good. you want to go. Good right there. And once you thread it, you take your little tab in here and tie her off again. You Billy, on this traditional, you want to take every advantage that you possibly can on it because it's hard enough. And like I said, a lot of your. Hardcore traditional guys, uh, they may be cringing right now. Yeah. But uh, when you're new to it, like I said, you want every advantage you can to make, make good shots. Not 
Nothing and you seen that come back right in the right in the corner of his eye. That's where you want it. All right, here we go. Hey, once again, <laughs> I can build something up for about three or four months and just tear it down in one video episode. <laughs> Here we go. You'll see where this anchor point is again on Randy. That's better. Get one more. Billy, that, that peep, man, that helps me so much, man. Oh, yeah. It just helps line everything up. Yeah. Because as we've said, you know, compound hunting, you, you can... It'll forgive a little bit more, but this right here, it won't forgive none whatsoever, will it? No. You better be. You're off on your anchor, your form, or something. You'll tail it in the target. Yeah. And that's why it's so pretty good group. Not too bad, is it? For out of the box. <laughs> that's, that's not too bad, is it? I'm well pleased with it, man. Well, we got the old uh, the old black hunter out. Uh, put it together. Put it through the paces. Uh, shot quite a few times. And what what do you think, Randy? Uh, Billy, I'm going to be honest with you. I I love it, and I thought there would be some. Uh, some learning, a learning curve to it, because you we went from a, a recurve to yeah. a more of a longbow. Yeah. I know it's it's kind of a hybrid, but it's still a longbow. Yeah. But uh, I thought there'd be a learning curve to it, but I, I'm gonna be honest with you, I I am well pleased with it. The the price, uh, all the research that you you really did most of the research yeah. on it, but uh, the price for it, and and you know, like you said there earlier, you got not nothing against people. You know, paying big names for for big name brand bows ain't a thing against that. But now, if you're just going to try something and see if you really like it, you you know, this would be something to try. And hey, you know, you could pass this down to your whoever. You know what I mean? If you decide to go with an, a bigger name, but I I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm tickled to death with this, and I I'm just gonna yeah. And and, I, and I'm like you. If you're looking to get into it and don't want to spend a fortune, I really don't think as of right now, now down the road. I mean, we may have issues with these, but, yeah. but out of the box, like I said, mine, I've had it been shooting with it last few weeks. Uh, zero problems. Uh, you were zero problems a day. And, and, and I would recommend this to anybody looking to get into traditional to see if yeah. you like it. And uh, and as far as hunting with this, I mean, I wouldn't have any hesitation. No, sir. Not uh, they, they shoot pretty accurate. Uh, as accurate as I can shoot it. I'm yeah. sure there's a lot of guys out there that can shoot it a lot more accurate than me. And, um, you know, right now, about 20, 25 on in, I'm pretty good, preferably 15 or 20. Uh, of course, a lot of that's, we've only been shooting traditional for, I guess, seriously, for the last, what, month? Month and a week, maybe. Um, yeah. So we're, we still have a few flyers. we got to tighten our groups up, but uh, it just goes with repetition. Try to get out there every evening you get home from work if you yeah. want to do this. Maybe put about 20 minutes in, yeah. shoot you a dozen, two dozen hours, put it up, and, and just keep doing that. But uh, I think you'll find too, Billy, if you do that, like, um, and I know many of you have talked about it a bunch before, even though if you're shooting by yourself, now shooting with a bunch of people is a lot more funner, but even coming home from work, it's kind of one of them things where you're looking forward to getting home oh, yeah. so you can shoot. Dude, this I ain't is, felt that way in a long time. Dude, I look forward to coming home and shooting this, and it's almost like a stress reliever from the day, and then you yeah. go out there and you're just, it's just you and the bow on the target, and, yeah. and and you really you really feel primitive. I mean, you're basically shooting a stick and a string. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. and just to be able to shoot accurately, um, that's an accomplishment to me. Yeah, I mean, granted, is. I'm not yeah. the most accurate by far, but yeah, you know, I'll have times where I'll have good tight groups every now and then you have a flyer, but some of that will be cleaned up over time and with consistency of shooting. But uh, I couldn't be more pleased with this bow, uh, honestly, for what we've got in it. Like I said, you can get these all day long on Amazon. I think these are uh, uh, Ceno Art. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's different manufacturers. I think Mandarin Duck makes it too. Yeah. There's three or four other people that. Uh, uh, distributors that sell these, but the, they're all the same. It's the Black Hunter. They're all the same, just maybe sold by some different companies. But uh, 
I'm thinking you could do this with this. I mean, even if you're not going to plan on hunting, just if you're looking for a cheap hobby and you like being, you know, being outside and doing things, you could you could buy one of these right here and just see if you like it. I mean, oh, yeah. just not even hunt with it. Just go out and just shoot some with your friends or whatever. You could even, we'd even talked about, you know, maybe doing some uh, some fishing with them. Yeah. Some turkey hunting with them, some deer hunting with them, some small game with it. So we're, um, I'm just really looking forward to some uh, making some good memories with it. We'll, we'll definitely be out uh, in April this year chasing around some golfers with these. I, whether it pans out or not, I don't know. But uh, uh, we might try to get one under our belt with a shotgun first and then break these out and see if we can have some fun. And, yeah. and then, like I said, just, uh, you know, between now and then, seeing how much more proficient and accurate we can get with it. and. You know, yeah. right now about 15 or 20 yards is probably how I'd shoot at a bird right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. And I would be, I'd be very, I'd be very confident at 15, uh, and pretty, pretty confident at 20. Yeah. Uh, so the more we shoot, the better we'll get. And like I said, guys, I, I would recommend it. Uh, yeah, buddy. Everything looks good on them. Shoots good. And uh, if you're looking for a cheap way to get in a tradition, we'll see if you like it or not. And for a, Decent shooting bow that's, I mean, it, overall the quality don't look bad neither no, so for, for what we've got into it. The quality's not bad and what really what really caught your eye was the speed, wouldn't it? Oh yeah, a lot yeah. of the reviews I watched, I mean, uh, they put these on the chrono. Of course, a lot of it's going to depend on your arrow weight and different mm -hmm. things. And of course, we do have a little, uh, probably a, a fast flight string. These will use a fast flight string where some of your others won't. But... Some of these guys I seen was getting anywhere from 182 to 192 foot per second, which yeah. in the traditional world is pretty smoking. That's smoking. So, uh, yeah. so they shoot pretty fast and yeah. as accurate as I can shoot it, they shoot pretty good. Well, I read an article one time. It's been a long time ago in Field and Stream or something, where it said uh, a lot of people go out and they buy a uh, twenty-five hundred, three thousand dollar rifle, where a lot of people can't out shoot a Walmart rifle. Yeah. And I feel like the average hunter like me and you can't out shoot yeah. this bow right here. No, I, right now at my skill level, I can't out shoot this. Yeah. I, and and you know I've seen these other guys on there. Big traditional says you can't buy accuracy. That's it. You know, once my accuracy builds up, my consistency, you know, I'm sure later on I want to get into something with a little bit better quality. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but at this point, I can't out shoot this bow, so there's no need in dumping a bunch of money into something no. that I can't out shoot. No. No. So, but uh, I, I would recommend it if you're looking to get into it, and I also recommend if you're new to it, go to YouTube, watch uh, the sh the movie or the or the show The Push, yeah. and you will learn more in that two hours and fifteen whatever minutes yeah. about traditional archery than you ever thought was out there. Uh, very informational. I can't. That has has changed everything for me as far as uh, shooting traditional. Uh, bow hunting. I just say it changed your life. Your bow hunting life on it. Oh watching yeah. Watching that video. Oh yeah. It's motivated me. It, it has. It has. Yeah. And it's broke it down to where layman's terms like. Yeah, very simple. A, a, a person that's ain't got no experience with traditional shooting and none whatsoever can watch that video, put some things together, and be shooting in a month and a week. Oh yeah. Shooting good groups. Yeah. Uh, and I come away there with a, with a what I felt like a, a pretty good understanding on how I needed to set up, how I needed to aim, what I needed to do. And yeah. uh, I yeah. think you will too. And uh, that's, uh, no, having the information to set these up, know what you're doing means everything. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, so, it's made a difference. So yeah, if you want one, get on Amazon. They're there all day long. Swap right. S swap right, it'll be right there at your doorstep. <laughs> My wife loves that. <laughs> and uh, if, you, if you don't know anything about traditional, while you're waiting on this bow to get there, Get on YouTube, watch the push. Time it gets there, you'll know what you need to do. Yep. So, yep. see no art, Black Hunter, I'm giving it a thumbs up. I'll give it a thumbs up too. Good deal. We'll see you in turkey season. All right.